Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is your short anxiety reduction uh, number four. Um, please only watch this or listen to this when you can safely close your eyes, although this is not a sleep session. Um, it's not even a relaxation session. This is a practical thing uh, regarding anxiety. But if you do, if you listen to my sleep sessions and relaxation sessions, you might automatically, there's a chance you could just fall asleep out of boredom. Um, so that's why I have to say that at the beginning. Right. The point of these short anxiety reduction sessions, although yesterday's was nearly 25 minutes, so I'm going to keep it shorter than that, the idea is to be about 10 minutes, to give you some techniques, some which I've used myself, uh, to help with day-to-day stuff, day-to-day anxiety, panic, things like that. And this particular session, this technique, is something that I really like. And so I'm going to share it with you. Okay? Uh, I, don't really, I don't really have a name for it, but this is for when you're on a bus or a train or in a lift, an elevator, uh, in an office. You know, when you're in a place where you've got somebody that's coughing or sneezing it's clearly got a cold and decided to share their germs with uh, being very generous with their germs you know with other people so I find you may not so if you don't then if you don't have an issue with that just turn off and go and do something uh, interesting uh, but this, I do have an issue with this. It bothers me, has always bothered me. Even when I was a kid, it bothered me. But um, I have a technique which helps me to reduce the anxiety. Okay? Which is what this whole series is about, reducing anxiety. So I'll get on with it. First of all, you, you need to kind of move away from the hatred that you might have towards the person. And it might sound a bit overreactive, but there is a, I've been in those situations where I've absolutely been disgusted by the idea that somebody's sneezing over me. Um, I'm not a germaphobe, I don't think, but I don't enjoy germs. I'm probably sort of in the middle of there somewhere. Ultimately, it's not a person's fault that they're ill we all get ill and we all get colds and not everybody can phone up work and say I can't come in some people have to work they have to go into work regardless because of their financial situation they may be self-employed so they've got no choice you know that doesn't help me in the situation generally but that's the reality so this isn't about hating on people for um, being inconsiderate because they might not have a, a choice in that situation. What this is about is helping you. And so, and the reason I mentioned about getting angry towards people and stuff is because part of this is compassion towards the other person. Okay? That's an important part of it. It's, a, it's actually a really big part of it. Because you can't be compassionate towards another person and also be angry at them at the same time. It's an impossible. It's impossible. It's. I don't know. It's like being horny at a funeral. It's just it, two things don't go together, you know. So, um, here's a scenario, and this is what you can do, if you choose to. Sitting on a bus, and you got someone that's coughing and sneezing, 
Now, if you're just getting onto the bus and you see that person is sitting at the front and there are seats at the back, then I would always go for the seats at the back. I wouldn't you know, purposely go and sit next to the person thinking, I'm going to be compassionate today. I don't have that. You know, I, I do also use my brain to stay away from people that have got cold, if possible, to a degree, just for the factual, you know, the factual side of it. Um, but this also is good for the immune system, what we're doing here. So it kind of strengthens the immune system as well as uh, strengthening your compassion towards someone that's unwell. Because if that person was your mother or your child or your husband or your grandparent, you'd have compassion towards them feeling unwell, perhaps, you know? So we're all just humans at the end of the day, most of us. So what I do, I'm sitting in the chair or the seat of the bus. You can use this for any public transport. I imagine planes is a, an issue for this sometimes, but I don't travel on planes, so uh, the shops aren't that far away. I mean, it's not, not a big traveling distance. So this is very good for, um, it's, a, it's a very good technique, I, I really do think so. Um, I'm going to say that, am I? Right, I'm going to get on with it. You're sitting down on the on the bus, and you hear, uh, 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 you know, all, all the the standard sounds that you hear um, from uh, someone that's uh, you know, just you know, loving. You know, I'm, I've got to stop making fun of them, but you know, they they're sharing their their love and. Instead of, you know, wanting to shout out, have you never heard of a tissue, you know, a hanky? Obviously, you can't do that. We're living in a social situation. And it's, you know, the person's unwell and maybe they just haven't, uh, their brain's not. When you've got a cold and stuff, your brain doesn't work 100%, does it? Let's face it, we all know that. When we're ill, um, it's just, we kind of had to, had to uh, perform on automatic to a degree. So here's what I do, here's what you can do, is you imagine in front of you and around you is a bubble, okay? It's basically a guard against those germs. It's a bubble, it's an invisible one, you can still see through it, you can still still look out the windows and stuff. And Otherwise, how are you going to know when to get off the bus? You need to be able to see through the bubble. So the bubble is, unless you get on the bus and say, oh, by the way, Mr. or Mrs. Uh, bus driver, I'm going to be creating a bubble. Um, so can you let me know when I get to the bus stop so I can know when to get off because the bubble is going to be blue tinted. No, that's, you might not even be allowed on the bus if you did that. So... I create this bubble around me, which protects me from germs, okay? And I'm breathing oxygen, but the oxygen I'm breathing, because it's like this big tube from the top of the bubble goes all the way up into the clouds. And I'm breathing in fresh air, really fresh air. So it stops any germs or anything like that getting into me. So I've got so we've got the bubble surrounding you to protect against the germs. So nothing can get in. So there's the tube for your oxygen. You can breathe, obviously, because it's an invisible bubble. It's not really there. But so you could tube. You know, you're breathing 
really fresh, clean, healing air. Now, at the same time this has happened, once you're there, once you're set, settled, it only takes a couple of seconds to do this. You can now imagine that a healing rain is starting to fall into the bus. So it's just like this cloud has come across. You can do it at that particular individual if you choose, or you can do it above the individual, or you could do it above everybody in the tra- on the plane or on the train or on the bus. Apart from yourself, because you, you're already okay. If you do it above the person, you can just see the imaginary cloud above them, just you know below the ceiling of the, or whatever you want to call it of the of the bus, and it starts to rain, healing energy. Okay, and this healing energy is to heal them of whatever it is that they have going on there, whatever illness they may have. And to heal them. So that's where the compassion comes in. Because you want them to be well. Just in the same way as you want someone that you cared about deeply to be well. And if you choose, you can have that cloud become bigger and or maybe break up and have one above every single person on the plane, the train or the bus, wherever you are. And having that healing rain falling onto their head and soaking into their body, soaking all the way through and healing them, healing their minds, healing their bodies. And when you do that, When you have those clouds above the people, maybe especially above the particular person, send in healing energy or healing rain on the top of their head all the way down through their body. You actually feel yourself, you feel a sense of, well it feels nice, it's going to feel different for everybody, but it feels nice, it actually really feels nice. And throughout this whole thing, guess what you're not feeling? You're not feeling anxious. No panic, no anxiety, none of that stuff. And also, along the lines, you start thinking maybe, you know, the initial reaction of seeing someone coughing and spluttering. And and although the initial reaction is going to go away very quickly, as soon as you do this technique. The chances are that that person isn't coughing because of a cold. Chances are that the cause of the coughing of that person is not catchable, which means that the healing rain of energy is much more needed, much more important to do that and to feel that and to send those well wishes to that person just as we all at some point in our lives would really benefit from other people sending us well wishes and wanting us to be well physically and emotionally.
So that's it. That's the whole thing. I mean, you can miss out all the chitter chatter that I've done. Um, but that's the basic technique. I'll go through it quickly again. You get on a bus or train. Ideally, you don't sit on their lap or anything because it's apart from the fact that I think that's probably against the law. But you know, sit away from them if you can. But you can't always, especially if you're on a the tube or an underground train. They're usually quite packed. Close your eyes if you can because it's a it's a situation as long as you're not driving the bus and just to be fair if you're driving a bus probably don't do any of these internal exercises either you need to concentrate on the on the, the driving it's like you know that'd be a weird one well, so what, how come you hit the lamppost Mr Bus Driver while well, I was thinking about uh, sending healing rain onto the heads of the people on the bus and why were you doing that because one of them was coughing, and I didn't feel very happy about the coughing. And uh, I thought I'd be trying to get some compassion. And uh, yeah, so, and also, you know, that's when I did a. Okay, so why would that cause you to drive into the lamppost? Well, you see, I had a bubble around me, but it was tinted, and I couldn't see through it. Yeah, so that's don't don't do that. That would be a bit weird. So, I mean, the whole thing's a bit weird, but I've done this. It works. It works for the anxiety reduction. Whether it helps the other person, I don't know. I don't care. Does it? help you that's what I care about and yes is the answer and this is just the beginning of a lot of other things that we can do this opens up possibilities using your imagination so thank you very much for listening and watching and I will speak to you next time which may be tomorrow uh, just to let you know, all my videos are on YouTube. Just If you don't know where it is, just put my name in, Jason Newland. Maybe Hypnosis next to it. Uh, and I'm on lots of different podcasts. iTunes, Spreaker, Spotify. So you can just put in uh, Relaxation Hypnosis for Spotify, which should bring you up these. Or you can just put the title of it. Short Anxiety Reduction, Jason Newland. You'll find that I'm all over the place. <laughs> Literally. Uh, so you take care of yourselves. Lots of love. And let me know how you get on as well. Bye.